In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make and customize a growth chart that you could cut out on your CNC machine. Now, as part of this video tutorial, I am providing everybody with the DXF for the basic growth chart. So basically what it'll be is it'll be a file with all the gradations and the numbering on it that you can use, and then you can bring it in and customize it as you see fit. So let me show you what, uh, what I did. Uh, this is the Minecraft growth chart that I designed that you see at the beginning of this video. Uh, so basically what I did was I, I have this basic growth chart with the lines for inches and millimeters. And I have the numbering next to each one that's scaled to what I consider appropriate. Now, what I did on this particular case was I changed the font. Uh, so I went into Google and I wanted to see if there was actually a Minecraft font. And I went to dafont.com and sure enough, there is a font called Minecrafter. And I downloaded that. There's two different versions. There's this one that looks like a kind of broken rock, and then there's this plain one. So I used the plain one because I wasn't going to V-carve this. I just wanted to pocket out the uh, all of the numbers, and I thought that this would work uh, a little little bit better. So what I did was I created a box, and then I put the Minecraft. Uh, name with that font inside of it and then I skewed the the box so that I brought the ends here inward to give it this three-dimensional look and then all I did was I created uh, three lines on the bottom here and I used node point editing and I took the node points at the bottom and I skewed those in um, these two points right here I just brought them in the same distance on either side and that's what gave it this this 3d look and what I did was I, I wanted to keep it as close to the Minecraft uh, logo as I could. And so the, you see all their logos for Minecraft, the letters are skewed. And because I wanted to pocket it, I just thought that I would, uh, I would create a box on the bottom so it looked like it was kind of carved out of a block of material of some sort. So that's what I ended up doing uh, to create the logo. Now, the, uh, the, the plan for this originally was I was actually going to V-carve all of the, the uh, lines and the letters. And I realized after I did some tests that if I put a 16th inch end mill in my CNC and I pocket everything out, I, I, the look was so much nicer. And the V-carving wasn't really working well with this font because if you take a look at the nine right here, you've got this little square in the middle. It just wasn't looking right. And you, you were ending up with very little material and then it would chip out. So by using a 16th inch down cut end mill, I, I got a beautiful cut on everything. And even these little tiny squares uh, and the little detail in the logo remained uh, perfect and it didn't chip out or anything. So... What I ended up doing on this was I was just trying to decorate it as much Minecraft as I could. Now, I don't know a lot about it, but I know my kids play it. So I figured, you know, it's a timely thing and, and, uh, and I would customize it. But now keep in mind, you can customize this thing any way you want. You don't have to do it in a Minecraft. You can do, a you know, for whatever, I don't whatever your, your child is into, a superhero or something like that. Uh, any Anything is possible with this, but the main... Uh, thing that's important about this file is the fact that the the file you you'll download is actually uh, let me open it it's this one right here okay so this is the file that you're going to get um, when you download the DXF all right so it's basically all of the lines and the numbers and for the fonts on the numbers I just used a, a basic Arial font and uh, you can again change that to you know any any font you like uh, you know stencil font or you know it's it's really up to you whatever you want to do on that I wouldn't change the number sizes too much because I think that they're scaled appropriately based on the actual size of the segments now you'll notice that I extended the segment lines past my material. So I actually am using a 
uh, one by eight piece of pine and uh, an eight inch piece of pine is technically seven and a half inches uh, here in the USA. So I, I made my job size slightly smaller than that because I wanted to run my end mill around the profile later and actually do a cut all the way down the side. So I didn't want to use the factory cut on the wood, so I made it slightly narrower. Now, if your wood is different, I mean, you could scale this up any way you want. Like for instance, uh, if I wanted to take this and say I wanted to do it uh, uh, 10 inches, uh, one by 10, which would actually be 9.5. Uh, okay, so what I'll do here is you'll see that the way that the file is set up, my millimeters side is gonna stay perfect on the, on the edge of the material. But this side over here, we're gonna have to move. So that's, that's relatively simple. Uh, it would just take, grab all the, uh, the line segments and the numbers from this side, deselect the uh, profile. And then all you need to do at this point is simply just, I, I would use my arrow keys and just move it over uh, I like to have the, the box slightly extend past the edge of the material. And the reason I did that is keep in mind that your end mill is round. So even at a 1 16th end mill, if I were to, uh, to machine this, I don't, I want to make sure that my, if, if I had the, the box here set to the edge and I come over and my end mill moves to the edge of the material, then it goes back and moves to the edge of the material. Uh, what I'm gonna end up with is a scalloped edge here that's not gonna be completely cut. So by extending the vectors past the edge of the material, yeah, okay, it adds a, a second or two more of production time, but now my end mill is coming clean past the edge and I have nice uh, you know, slots that, are, that, are, that go all the way out the side of the material. So you can adjust that as much as you want. You can bring this in closer. You don't have to leave it there. Uh, I just you know, had it set for that and on my machine, it, it was really no big deal. So that's all you have to do to change the width. Now, as far as the profile, I chose a round top and bottom, but you can, you can do whatever you want. You, you can make it uh, square, you can make a fancy shape. Uh, so what I would do here, if I want to make this profile work for this size wood, uh, I can go over to uh, set s selected object size and just scale this up to 9.5 and apply it. Um, actually, I'm going to do that without linking X and Y. So 9.5 and now what I can do is just click on it again and center it to my material. and now it's, you know, it's in place. Now the, the uh, arch um, radius has changed because I, I stretched it. If I kept link X, Y, it would have been a lot taller as well as wider, but it would have kept the same profile on the top. So it, you can change the profile if you want. You can start with a new arc um, if, if you wanted to on here. So for instance, if I go into node editing, I can um, put my cursor over the nodes here and select C for cut and do the same thing on this side. And then I can select this part here and just delete it. And um, now I can, I can make a new arch that uh, using the arc tool. So I can go from here to here and then, you know, come up to any size I want. Now, if you pull it all the way up, it's going to naturally make that uh, half circle mark. So you, you have the ability to do that. Uh, let's see, what else? On, on this, I would not also change the, the scaling. Uh, I have these set up from the bottom. So on this file, I have a zero reference line. So each of these scales is based on this zero reference line. So no matter what you do to the profile on your project, make sure that the project starts on this reference line. Otherwise, your, uh, your, your line segments are not going to be accurate from the floor. Okay, so this takes into consideration that the bottom of this growth chart is going to sit on your floor. Um, I'll, and I'll talk about how to fix that in a minute if you need to. So if we go to the measuring tool... And let's see, I'm just gonna scale out slightly. If I go from the one foot mark down to this yellow line, uh, let's see, 
if I go from the top of the uh, one foot mark down to the yellow line, you could see over here that I have 12.0186. So I, I based it off the center of each of these marks. So that's why, and I just measured now from the top. So that's why it's slightly over. Uh, but that's where your, your measurements come into play. They come in from the zero reference line. Now, the other thing is you may have baseboard in your house. So you may have a baseboard along the floor. And if you want to put this in a room, you have to account for the baseboard and you may not be able to put it so that this is on the floor because, you know, your, your wall trim, you know, might be right here and you have to adjust for that. So if that's the case, what I would do is measure the uh, height of the baseboard. And like, for instance, um, let's just take a look at this square. And if my, if I knew that my baseboard height was uh, say four and a quarter inches and then what I would do is I would just set my height to this rectangle at four and a quarter and I would double click it and bring it all the way across. So that looks, that would represent the, the baseboard on my, on my um, project. So now what I would do is, is I would basically just cut and delete everything below or inside of this, this box. Okay. So you can, you can do it real easy just with the, you know, the clip tool and, um, just remove everything inside the box, um, including the arc and all of the associated lines that go with it. Okay, and then what I would do here is then I would just kind of do this and get rid of everything in one shot. And I would also get rid of this font since it would get cut off. Um, and I would probably get rid of this lower uh, mark right here since that's in the middle of where the where the bottom is so i'm going to delete that now all you need to do is just use the scissor tool and you can clip out the outside edge and and that would give you your your new profile on there um so you can you can do that pretty easily and now you when you cut this this line right here represents your baseboard so this now the growth chart will sit right on top of your baseboard but the measurements are still going to be accurate from the floor up all right just make sure that whatever you do you you use this uh this zero reference line um let's see now the next thing we can do here is uh customize in in the middle field so you could put anything you want in here what I basically did, and I'm going to show you on the, uh, on the other one, let me just not save this. On the Minecraft one, what I ended up doing was I, I wanted to put some Minecraft tools in there. So I went to Google and I did a search for Minecraft tools, but I wanted to make sure I searched for black and white. Uh, that way I can image trace it, you know, pretty easily. So I, you know, I just looked around until I found some of the tools and again not knowing much about minecraft took me a little while to figure out what i needed i i noticed that all of the the tools that are like equivalent to the game are very pixelated like this so that's what i was looking for so if i take this one here and i go ahead and save that image and the problem with this one is that the format that it was in was html so i can't use that particular image as it is uh, you can see there's other tools down here. Now, if I want to use this image, I can actually uh, go ahead and, and do a uh, screen grab and capture that. But for now, I'm just going to look at another one. Let's see. We try this one. Save image as. This is a PNG, so this is going to work fine. So then what I would do is come over here and go back to my desktop, growth chart tutorial, and bring in the bitmap. Now it's going to go on a bitmap layer, which uh, is right here in the middle of the project. So you're going to have to look for that. So what I'm going to do is move it out to the side. I want to make sure it's selected. I'm going to go over to image trace right here, trace bitmap. I'm going to select that, make sure black and white is set. I'm going to leave everything at a default. And then I'm going to go ahead here and let me see, click. Uh, preview and then apply and then close that now if I get rid of if I if I turn off the bitmap layer you can see that I'm left with this uh, vector of that image and, and so I didn't have to draw it everything is all set 
And then all I would do there is I would scale it to the size I need. And in this case, this is the same one. So you can see I, I actually flipped it so it's pointing in the other direction and I scaled it down to fit in this spot. Uh, the reason I flipped it was if you notice, I've got tools going in, in opposite directions. So I did that just for aesthetics. Okay, so that, that's really all I did to, uh, to bring in the tools. I, I just found the images on Google. I image traced them and then created a tool path out of it. Uh, so basically, yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, you can customize this chart any way you want. Uh, on this particular one, I'll show you the tool paths here that I did. So I've got, when I set up the tool pass on this, I, uh, sorry, my mouse is a little, little sensitive. Uh, I set up the numbers first in one tool path. Then I did the ruler lines in a separate tool path, but they're in the same group. So they all run in the same file. Uh, then I did the tools last. And then at the top, I did the, uh, the logo box right up here. And now what I did was I just did the logo box. So anything that's shaded here is what I'm cutting at this time. The actual logo itself and this uh, graphic up at the top, I actually did that with a V-carve. Now let's just take a look at these before I jump into that, um, the, the tool pass that I use. So I am using, in, in this case, I, I switched to a two millimeter end mill. I was using a 16th end mill, you could use either or. Uh, the problem I had was that the 16th end mill that I, I had was an up cut and I needed a down cut and the only one I had was a two millimeter. Uh, so my cut depth on this is roughly a 16th of an inch from the surface. So that's all I'm doing is each, each of these uh, things that are pocketed are only down by uh, a 16th of an inch. Okay, so that's uh, that's all you need to do. You, you just want to get it slightly below the surface so that you, you can seal it and then infill it later and you'll get a nice, um, uh, you know, painted fill line. Uh, so then what I did was I went to the logo and I did a V-carve tool path on the Minecraft letters and on this graphic at the top. And basically what I did there was I used an Amana RC1045, which is a 45 degree V-bit. I set a flat depth to 0.06, so roughly a 16th of an inch, same as the rest of the pockets. That way the V-carve depth of these letters is going to be exactly the same as everything else. Um, and let's see here, I'm going to recalculate um, and let me show you a preview. So when we look at the preview on this, the first thing I did was do the numbers. So I previewed that. Now I have it filled here to black, but I'm actually going to finish uh, my project in red. So let's turn it on red so we can see what it's going to look like. So there's all the numbers done. Again, two millimeter or 16th end mill is, uh, is perfect for this. And you, even these little centers of the, of the numbers were, were great. No issues at all. Just make sure you're using a down cut end mill. Uh, then I do the ruler lines. Again, my uh, vectors all extend past the edge. Um, Vectric kind of extends this line down. Uh, don't pay attention to that because it's, it's not, your end mill is only gonna go across at a 16th inch. It doesn't actually go down the side. Uh, then we do the tools and you can see those are done. And then finally at the top, uh, we do the logo box, which is right here. Okay, then we switch to the V-bit and now we're gonna do the logo V-carve. All right, so basically I, I, I chose a V-carve on this particular one. I, I could have done it with a 16th inch end mill and it wouldn't really have made a difference. I just wanted to see what um, you know what a V carving effect would have on it. it. It came out good, but again, you could do it either way. You don't need to use a V bit. I could have used a sixteenth or a two millimeter end mill for the entire thing, and it would have been fine. Now, the last thing I did here was I did the profile cut. Now, again, I made sure that my my profile cut the vertical vectors were actually slightly narrower than the width of my material, and I did that so that it would come down and clear off the entire edge. And the reason I did that is when you're using an end mill, whether it's down cut or up cut, as you run the end mill past the edge of the material, right in these little spots right here on the corners, you're gonna get little 
fray pieces of, uh, of wood, especially if you're using something soft like pine, like I'm using. Uh, so by running an end mill tool path all the way around the outside, you do two things. You get rid of all those fuzzies so you don't have to sit there later with a piece of sandpaper and clean out each pocket. And the second thing you do is you get rid of the factory edge on the board so you have a nice, clean, uh, straight edge on both sides of this. So, you know, depending on how you're going to finish it, uh, then you, you'll be able to do that. Now, what I did on, um, on this one is I actually... Uh, shellac the entire board and then I sprayed red over the top and then I sanded the top off so everything that's been uh, pocketed is red it'll look just like this uh, preview right here okay so that's how I did the tool pass on this as uh, relatively straightforward uh, if we go back to the growth chart this is the file that you know you're going to get uh, I did include the tool pass in there so you have the numbers and the lines and then the profile cutout and i set these up for 16th inch end mills which uh, again is going to work fine it might be more readily available for uh, at least people in north america to get imperial tooling but uh, if you're elsewhere in the world you can do it with a two millimeter and it's going to come out uh, perfectly as well so you'll be able to download this file the link is uh, below and i'll have a link to our website as well that you can download the file from there uh, do me a favor, though, if you uh, if you do use it, uh, post some pictures of it. I'd love to see what people do with this and different variations and how creative people get. Uh, and the reason I'm, I'm providing the file is to, quite honestly, it took a long time to uh, set up all these, these line segments uh, so that they were spaced properly and, and the measurements worked. And I did it in metric and imperial. Now, if you don't want the metric side, you could just highlight those uh, line, vectors and just get rid of them. Or if you don't want the imperial side, same thing. You can just highlight and get rid of them. I did both. So depending on where in the world you are, you can uh, use this file uh, either way. So this will save you quite a bit of time from having to sit there and, and lay out all these rectangles and uh, set up your measurements and everything there. So, you know, have fun with this. And uh, I'm, I'm anxious to see what uh, everybody does with this file.